Under Rule 64E-16 of the Florida Administrative Code, biomedical waste is defined as any solid or liquid which may present a threat of infection to humans. Some examples are non-liquid tissue and body parts from humans and other primates, laboratory waste, blood and blood products, body fluids or materials saturated with blood or blood products, and discarded sharps. All healthcare workers should take precaution to prevent injuries which may be caused by sharps. Sharps are defined as materials that are capable of puncturing, lacerating, or otherwise penetrating the skin. And because there is this danger of puncturing the skin or penetrating the skin layer, they need to be put into an approved sharps container. Needles and syringes with needles attached and contaminated hard plastic or glass objects that are broken are just some examples of sharps. Absorbent materials saturated with blood, body fluids, or excretions or secretions contaminated with blood are biomedical waste. Absorbent materials saturated with blood or blood products that have dried, such as this gauze with dried blood from a surgical wound inside this young boy's ankle cast, are also included. Your gauze, your band-aid, your cotton ball is a type of absorbent material that under the definition of the code would have to be saturated to be defined as biomedical waste. The code also includes as biomedical waste non-absorbent disposable devices, such as this disposable plastic surgical drape being taken down by the nurse, that have been contaminated with blood, body fluids, or blood contaminated secretions or excretions, and have not been sterilized or disinfected by an approved method. A non-absorbent device would be a pair of gloves, an IV tube, a urine specimen cup, if there was to have the secretions with the blood in it, etc. Biomedical waste must be segregated from other solid waste and placed into either a red bag or sharps container before it leaves the point of origin. The point of origin for biomedical waste is defined as the room, area, or location where biomedical waste is actually produced. Some generators get confused here and think that they can carry uncontained biomedical waste out of the point of origin and to a red bag or sharps container elsewhere. Proper containment of biomedical waste at the point of origin reduces the risk of exposure. Every sharp needs to be contained in an approved sharps container at the point of origin. If the generator decides not to wall mount a sharps container or put a sharps container on the counter to leave in the room, then he or she may carry the sharps container into the room, place the used syringe and needle into the sharps container, and then carry it out with them. In this example, the supervisor asked the environmental services employee not to put a red bag on a trash cart along with the regular solid waste. She is taking extra precaution because she is aware that if the two are mixed, and there is a leaking or ruptured red bag. The entire waste load is contaminated and must then be managed as biomedical waste. With the exception of sharps, biomedical waste must be packaged in impermeable red polyethylene or polypropylene bags like the one with these IV tubes and other biomedical waste are being placed in. Each bag is to be constructed of polychlorinated free filler plastics. The bag must meet rigorous impact and tearing resistance standards to reduce the likelihood of rupture or tearing during handling. Sharps must be segregated from all other waste and put directly into a sharps container. Sharps containers must be designed primarily for the containment of sharps. Sharps containers must be leak resistant, rigid, and puncture resistant. They must bear the appropriate phrase and the international biological hazard symbol. It is extremely important not to overfill a sharps container. A sharps container, generally the plastic sharps container, have a designated fill line. The reason for that is to minimize employee exposure and the chances of being stuck from needles or other types of sharps coming out of the container itself. Pressed fiberboard sharps containers must also meet the above standards. Contaminated glass and plasticware that are broken may at the discretion of the generator be placed in a double-walled corrugated or solid fiberboard sharps container. However, 
needles and scalpel blades are prohibited from being placed directly into double-walled, corrugated, or solid fiberboard sharps containers. Biomedical waste can be stored at the generating facility for a period of up to 30 days. The 30-day time period starts when the first non-sharps item of biomedical waste is placed in a red bag or sharps container, or when a sharps container with only sharps is full or closed. All indoor biomedical waste storage areas should be restricted. What does restricted mean? Under the definition of restricted, that can either fall under one, locked at all times, two, a sign designating the restriction, or three, just the location itself. The easiest way to satisfy this requirement of the code is to put some sign on the door, whether it be authorized access, employees only, designating the restriction. The storage area should be constructed of smooth and easy to clean materials. And the reason for this is? So that if there is a biomedical waste spill, and out of all the places for biomedical waste spill, this is the highest probability of having a spill because you're bringing all of your waste to the storage area. So you need to have it easily cleanable or disinfected if there were to be a spill. Um, therefore, you cannot have carpeting in the area, um, and even if it is constructed of cement, you need to make sure the cement is sealed because cement itself is porous. Outdoor storage areas and containers are to be conspicuously marked with the International Biological Hazard Symbol and must be secured against vandalism and unauthorized entry. Because an outdoor storage area is more easily accessible to the general public as opposed to indoor storage areas, the presence of the symbol and security mechanism are required. <laughs>